for 9b, we have something that is not uh, set equal to 0. So the first thing we want to do is move the sine over and get it equal to 0. Uh, so if we do that, you'll get cosine times cosine of theta. Don't want to forget your theta there. Sine 2 theta minus sine theta equals 0. Okay, so you always want to make sure you have a 0 on this side uh, in order to uh, solve it. Now, uh, what's left here, unfortunately we can't take out a common factor on this one because although there's a sign that's repeated twice, this one has a 2 theta and this one has a theta. So these are not considered light terms, so you're not allowed to take out a common factor. Instead what you want to do is put the identity in for sine 2 theta. That was a double angle formula. We've, we did a problem previously on this test that had to do uh, with that one. So we're going to use that same identity here. Now the identity that you want to use is 2 sine theta cosine theta. That's the identity for sine 2 theta. So we're going to put this all in. Now because of that we actually do, have, let's clean it up first. Uh, we have a, a 2 we'll put on the outside. We have two cosines. So cosine squared theta and then sine theta and we have minus sine theta, that equals zero. So with this, you have a, uh, you do have a, a common factor of sine for this one once we clean that up. Sine theta is going to come out, and we get two cosine squared theta minus one left over. So again, you want to pull out the, the common factor like we did before in the previous problem in, in, in eight, we did that. And now you have both of these, you're going to set equal to zero individually. So sine theta equals zero. Two cosine squared theta minus one equals zero. The first one, you're looking, you know, this time we want to use degrees. Okay, so if sine theta equals zero, that's going to occur at zero degrees and pi. We had that, those same two angles on a previous problem on this sample test. So we did those already and we got zero and 180 degrees. So that takes care of the first one. Now the second one, let me bring that up here and, and solve for it. If we solve for cosine squared, add one divided by two, we get cosine squared that is equal to one half. Now you don't want to look at the unit circle for one half because it's cosine squared. So you have to take the square root of both sides first. So if you do that, you're going to get don't forget the most important thing about squares is you got to make sure you put plus or minus. Every time you take the square root of, of both sides, you need plus or minus. Plus or minus the square root of one half. Now to make this look like a value that we have on the unit circle, we're going to uh, we'll write this as plus or minus one over square root of two first, and then we want to rationalize it. So we've got plus or minus 1 over square root of 2. I'm going to now rationalize it by multiplying by square root of 2 over square root of 2. And the only reason for doing that is to get a familiar value on the unit circle that we can get the angle for. When you rationalize it, you're going to get plus or minus square root of 2 over 2. So because you get plus or minus, this means you're going to get an answer in all four quadrants. So we're going to get four answers from this one. They're all using the reference angle of 45 degrees. So the first answer is 45 degrees and in the second quadrant if you take 90 plus the 45s you'll get 135. Down there in the third quadrant it's like you're doing 180 plus 45 so 225. And then the last one you'll get in the fourth quadrant that's going to be 315 degrees. So you get all four of these answers for the second equation here. Uh, so you'll have six answers on this one, these first two and then these four angles. And when you write your answers in number line, they don't have to be in order, uh, just as long as you have all six of them given there.